Hello, this is Lachmi Kantiwari. Let's start with how to load by using a register. First of all, it is very important to know that ARM does not provide any LDR instruction and it is a pseudo instruction which is offered by the assembler and assembler changes this instruction in equivalent move or MVN instruction or it can also generate a PC relative address to read the constant from the literal pool. I want to tell you who do not know what a literal pool is. Literal pool is an area in a program where the constant data is stored. Now let's take an example for the sake of simplicity. We written these instructions to load the 256 decimal values in a register and what will assembler do here? Just simply assembler will load once complement of zero using MVN instruction. As we can see in the next line of code, if you are trying to load a very large value, then simply assembler will generate a PC relative address to load the constant from the literal pool. And assembler stores the constant in a literal pool using the DCD. It means a defined constant data. There are number of variations of LDR instructions. ARM has given the freedom to the programmer. You can load word, half word with byte. And these instructions are LDRB, which means the load register, but only one byte and the lower byte will fill with the new loaded data. And also LDRS, LDRSP, LDRSH have the same explanation. And these pseudo instructions is for loading the register, but ARM also have a similar type of instructions for a storing and it is a STR instruction. And this is a syntax of LDR and the STR instructions where we can clearly see that condition and the size specifier are optional. And the thumb mode does not support a conditional surfaces in a single instruction. However, if you want to use it, then you have to use a separate branch instruction. Now let's uh, take an example of a load store instructions. And you know the address accessed by the LDR or SDR is specified by a base register. And with an offset and this offset can be given directly as an immediate value or it can be specified with the shift operation using a barrel shifter. And here we are loading R0 from the address R1 plus 8. That means the value of R1 plus 8 will become an effective address from which R0 will be loaded. And this square bracket means the value will become an effective address. And here R0 will be loaded with the address generated by the R1 plus R2. And here barrel shifter first save the R2, then ALU will add this to R1. And then this whole operation will become an effective address for the loading the R0. And these values can be add or subtract, it doesn't matter. Now we have only discussed so far only one register operation with the LDR and STR, but ARM provides a multiple instructions that can load and store multiple registers in one instruction. And these instructions are a LDM and a STM. This is a syntax of the LDM and the STM. Here you can see a new term is addressing mode. Addressing mode are four types and these are the increment after, increment before, decrement after and the decrement before. I want to explain this with an example. Let's take this. I want to explain this with an example. Now let's take this load register example. Here if addressing mode is IA, then it will first load R0 with the base register. It is stored in R10 and uh, then Here, if addressing mode is IA, then it will first load R0 with base address stored in R10. Then it will increase R10 by 1. That means now R10 will become base address plus 4. Now, value at address R10 plus 1 will load in R1 and the same process will repeat ahead. And if addressing mode is IB, then first it will increase the address then it loads the value from the base address and the remaining process will perform in the same fashion. The DA and the DB have a same explanation but in a decrease. The DA and the DB have a same explanation but in a decreasing address direction. Now let's do an exercise. Assume we have an array of 25 words and the compiler associates Y with R1 internally during the compile time. 
and also assume that the base address for the array is located in R2. So translate this C statement in assembly using just three instructions. So here with this first instructions, we are loading array 5 in R3 because R2 has a base address of array. That's mean R0, sorry, the array 0. And uh, array 1 is R2 plus 1 and so that array 5 is equal to the value stored at the address R2 plus 5. So now here we are adding y that's mean R2 with the array R5. Sorry. Uh, now here we are adding y that's mean R2 with the array 5 that's mean R3. So here we can say new R3 is equal to the array 5 plus y. Now here in the last line of the code, we are just storing this array 5 plus y to the address of r2 plus 10, which is equivalent to the array 10. That's when the array 10 is equal to the array 5 plus y. We have a two basic type of multiply instructions. First one is that instruction, uh, those product, first one is that instructions, those produces a 32-bit result based on the bottom 32-bit of a 64-bit result and another one is those that produces the full 64-bit result. Now, for each of those, we can do accumulation or not, that's mean back operation and also we have assigned and unsigned version of the multiplication long instructions. If you are only using the bottom 32-bit of a 64-bit result, for the standard sign multiplication, then there is no reason to have a sign version. Branch instructions are allow us to perform a conditional operations. And this branch operation cannot be performed over the plus minus 32 MB address range. Here you can see upper 4 bit is a conditional field. That means only 16 conditions can be implemented with these 4 bits. R provides two type of branches. First one is just branch like go to in C programming and another one is a branch with a link. And these instructions uses for calling a function and return addresses stores in a link registers, which is R14. And when program call a function, then first it will store the current execution address in a link register and other processor context will store into the program status register that is the PSR. Now, when it enters in a function, then best programming practice is a first store the link register in a stack pointer. Otherwise, nested function call will corrupt the link register. After execution of a called function processor will return from a function to the main program by loading a link register in a program counter. And it will also load a saved program status register that is SPSR value in a current program status register to resume a checked task. ARM instruction at the conditional execution of program and this improves the code density. Here I want to show you how it converts a C code in equivalent assembly code. C code explain it when variable R3 is not equal to 0 then add variable R1 and R2 and put the result in R0. And this code is in thumb mode code and it is taking 6 byte to complete the code execution whereas if we write the same code in R mode instruction set then it is taking only two line of code and each line is a four byte. So it is taking eight byte space. So here we have a proof how thumb instructions have a higher code density than R instructions. One more important aspect I want to tell you in this slide, but by default data processing instructions does not affect the condition code flag in PSR, but flag can be optionally said by using S. And also CMP TST instructions automatically update the status flag. It doesn't need the S. Here is some condition code which we can suffice with the branch instruction. We can say BEQ means the branch if equal or we can say BNE that means branch if not equal and concept with other suffices are the same. Now last let's do an exercise. Here in C, here in a C code we are going to convert this code in a thumb and arm instruction set. In thumb or in unconditional code it is a taking a five instruction that's mean a 10 byte of code but in ARM instruction set, it is a, uh, it takes only a three instructions. But here, code size is only the 12 byte. I am going to stop this tutorial here. And if you have any question, please comment below and subscribe this channel for more video tutorials.